Hi, everybody. Hi. 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 Well, how exciting. This is my favorite part, because this is when uh, we first get to see all of the new people. So for those of you who haven't been counting, I know we're theaterish people, number five is where we are right now. This Woo. is the fifth year of the Hollywood Fringe Festival. Um, absolutely exciting stuff. Um, uh, thank you to all the folks at Hudson and Mike Abramson, wherever you might be. Thank you, oh, thank you very much for hosting this and the other two uh, town halls that are coming up as well. Um, for your information, you should all know that this town hall is being taped. Your presence is your compliance, but we probably won't get you on the camera anyway. It's just facing me. I've been told I can't pace past about this level, so I'm a pacer. So if you see me pace, everyone just scream at the same time, and I will, I will move back. Um, so for the, for the benefit of everyone not here that wanted to be here, because I hear there's some sort of sporting event happening today, um, everyone say hi to the camera. Hi. That's for you guys. OK, that's the last time I addressed the camera. Um, all right, today. We are going to talk about the Hollywood Fringe Festival. This tends to be a rather large subject, so we are going to limit the scope of our conversation today. The crying sound is my baby, by the way. We'll all meet her later. Um, so we're going to be focused today. What are we going to be talking about, you might ask? I happen to have the answer to that question. We're going to be talking about getting started. We're going to talk about planning, and we're going to talk about Budgeting, which is you know financial planning. That's what we're going to talk about. So this is basically the your core class in fringing. This is Fringe 101. Everyone say hi to my baby. Hi. Everyone say how beautiful she is. You get 10% off your registration. <laughs> I, I lie. I lie to you all. Um, okay, as far as, uh, for those of you at home that can't hear me right now, we are tweeting on HFF14, pound sign HFF14. We will continue to tweet on pound sign HFF14, and if you will take my advice, so will you, because that's actually a wonderful way to connect with one another. There are people on the Fringe staff and the fringe uh, <laughs> that don't tweet at all until February 1st. And then they're all over Twitter. They follow the pound sign HFF14 hashtag. They post to it. This is a great way to connect with the community moving forward. A lot of people during Fringe checked out religiously. So for those of you who don't know how to use Twitter, grab any 20-something, and they'll probably know how to use Twitter, and they'll show you how. Um, it's, it's pretty easy. Hi, I'm at the Hollywood Fringe Town Hall, pound sign HFF14. Um, it, it, feel free to be on your phones and taking notes and laptops, taking notes and tweetering and that sort of business. You will not offend me. Actually, taking notes is usually a good idea. You know everyone who graduated in the last 10 years, because they'll have laptops, and they're taking notes on those. Um, OK, so we talked about that. We talked about what we're talking about. We talked about tweeting. Um, for, for support into the future, we offer email support. We try to get back to you within one business day. Um, uh, I believe that Saturdays and Sundays are not business days, but we also try to get back to you on weekends when we can. Uh, this is a very important email, support at hollywoodfringe.org. Um, not French, it's fringe. It's annoying when people think I'm hosting a French festival. Um, and funny story, there actually was a French festival down the road when we hosted the 2010 French. It was very confusing. Um, after all of this, we will have a question and answer. So I'm going to talk at you, sorry, for a while to get as much information as I can out in the limited time we have available. And then there will be, I'll try to at least, at least 45 minutes for questions and answers. So please, unless I said something utterly confusing, or if I said something that I'm about to say but don't say it, then uh, please hold your questions until the end. And don't let me drop my pen. Um, after this, we're having a mixer at the Three Clubs Bar. Um, the Three Clubs Bar is at the corner of Santa Monica and Vine. Walk down Santa Monica, it's right there on Vine. There will be other people there, we'll be drinking, we'll be talking about Fringe, there will be Fringe staff there. And speaking of Fringe staff, if you're Fringe staff, raise your hand so I can see you. All right, this is Jeff Warden. In front of that's Con Matu. That's James Warfield right here. Say hi, James. There's Dave McKeever. Wave your hand. My wife, Stacy Jones. Hey, Hill. That's her last name right there. Zay Weaver. Wave. Hi, all French staff. Anybody I missed? 
Oh, wave your hand. Megan McCauley over here. She's tw uh, twittering this right now. Bella Luna right here. Wave, wave, wave. Most of them will be at the three clubs after this, so feel free to answer questions. And who else? And, and they will be showing the screen. And Carb. Jesus, look at the face. <laughs> Elizabeth Carb. All right. They will be showing the Super Bowl at the bar and have happy hour prizes. Very key. So there will be Super Bowling. Future. So thank you for coming. All right, let's get started, shall we? Answering the question, the question that you want to know. What is the Hollywood Fringe Festival? For that matter, what is a Fringe Festival? Well, that will take us back to the year 1947. It is Britain. It's an island. You might have heard of it. Um, it it's post-war it's post time. They're looking for an event, an event, an event of art that might heal the wounds caused by the wars. Uh, this event was not the Hollywood Fringe Festival, this, uh, <laughs> nor was it the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. This event was the Edinburgh International Festival. It was a curated festival, meaning you needed to be invited to play. You needed an invitation saying, you interesting, well-established dance group, you may come to our festival. Um, some people didn't like this. Some people didn't like the fact that they weren't invited to this festival of art and healing. So they just showed up. One might say they just showed up on the fringes of the festival. <laughs> ah, and that's where it came from. Totally unorganized. People just showed up. There was no central organization saying, what you do is good and what you do is bad. OK, so fast forward over the next whatever, how many years, it's math. Um, and, and you will find that fringes have s spun up in cities all around the globe, in every continent, in almost every major city. You have a fringe festival. Not every fringe festival is the same. Actually, there is no huge New York skyscraper with the words fringe on it that runs all the fringe festivals. Fringe is a, <laughs> hi buddy, uh, <laughs> fringe. Uh, uh, Fringe is, uh, is a global brand uh, to give an, and it really, it means something different for each festival. Now, for us, what is the Hollywood Fringe Festival? Um, I will tell you, we started in the year 2010. It wasn't that long ago, almost five years actually. Um, we use a unique mo uh, model for the United States. For those of you who are used to Canadian Fringe Festivals, you might be used to lotteries. You might be used to like first come, first survey type things, limited amount. We have these venues. We program you into these venues. That's not how we work. We work very much in the original Edinburgh, Scotland Fringe Festival, or Festival of Fringe, actually they call it style, in that you guys, we give you a geographical area, and I'm going to talk about that in a second, where you may choose a venue. You choose your own venue. You choose your own ticket price. You choose your own dates. You choose your own dot, dot, dot is going to be a theme throughout the, uh, your fringe experience. Fundamentally, the people in this room that are going to be putting on these shows, you are your own businesses. You are your own producers. We are here, the fringe organization, to support you in this endeavor and to provide unified marketing for the fringe itself. Um, so like we basically tell the world we have a fringe festival and we point and here are the people in it. One thing we don't do is we say and featuring dot 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 big Coachella type font, medium font, small font. We don't do that. All of you are the same sized font to us. Um, so you will find that uh, a lot of, of what we do, what we can and cannot do is based on that principle. It's our, it's our prime objective. It is our major thing that we don't violate. All shows in our eye, eyes, collectively, are equal. Uh, we don't promote one over the other. And we're very, very sensitive. If you go to a fringe staffer and you're a patron or a participant checking and pretending to be a patron and say, Khan, what's the best show at the Hollywood Fringe Festival? What should I spend my hard money on? Uh, well, I can tell you what shows are coming up. OK, what that's all you can say. He can say, I can tell you what shows are coming up. Or he can say, what categories of shows are you looking for? Here's how you can discover the shows here. What he can say is that that Greg Kraft's show is amazing. You really got to see that stuff. He's a wunderkind. We also can't speak in German. Um, <laughs> it's in the, the bylaws. OK, 
So that's, you got that idea. Major principle uh, is what, what we'll do. If you tweet at us and say, hey, could you help me with my fundraiser? Yeah, we'll retweet that for you. That's not a problem. But if you say, like, hey, can you take an interview with our hometown newspaper and tell everyone how wonderful we are and we're the best show at the fringe? We cannot do anything even close to that, just so you know. OK, fantastic. Um, 2010 was our first one. We had a small one, for those of you who remember. Raise your hand if you're here since 2010. Well, look, well, you uh, definitely finished staff. Okay, great. So some people have been here since 2010. That's actually great. We've grown a lot since 2010. And we had a couple hundred shows in 2010. We started large. Um, we were at this fun little bar. It was fun. It was a really special, special time. But we were very young and still, you know, relatively organized. Uh, 2011 is known as the year of the tent. Uh, we were right here at the Artworks Theater. We had a tent. It was fun. There was a tent. And we gallivanted and drank in the tent. I don't know if gallivanted is a word, but we're just going to say it is. 2012, we opened uh, in a place that is now a paint shop uh, across, across the road, the uh, Fringe Central Station. Boo. Um, we added a bunch of new programs. We added the concept of buttons, which we're going to talk about. We added the concept of the Fringe Cabaret, which we're going to talk about. That was actually two, more 2011, but you get the idea. 2012, we added this thing called Student Fringe, which we'll talk about a bit. And we formalized the idea of, of, of Fringe TV, which is another thing that we will talk about. I told you it's a big subject. Um, 2013 was a big year because we added a week to the festival. So for those of you who don't know the dates, and we're going to talk about this in a second, write those down. It's longer than you might think. All right. That's a little history for you. Everyone clear? If not, ask during the Q&A. Uh, let's talk about what the festival is and what the festival is not. It is a performing arts festival, for those of you who read in that direction. A performing arts festival. Um, what does that mean? It means that uh, mainly we focus on live performing arts on a stage. Uh, that is 99% of the participants uh, uh, shows within the Fringe Festival. What does that mean? That generally film, we've had film. Film was welcome, absolutely. We used to have a film program run by the festival. We don't anymore. But if you have a film and you want to register them, by all means. Hell, if you have a candy bar tasting show that you want to register, <laughs> You can take that idea. You can register that for the Fringe if you want. But I'm telling you that what the Fringe is known for and what that brand is closely, most closely associated with are the performing arts. And that includes, as well as theater, uh, dance, cabaret, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If it's on a stage, that's generally, with people on it, that's generally what we do. Um, it is open access. And what does that mean, open access? Open access is basically what the Edinburgh Fringe symbolized. That means anyone can join. There's no one saying, what you're doing is too controversial, it's too awful, it's too great, it's going to make the others look bad. If you have a show, if you have a venue, and you've paid your registration fee, you can fringe. There's absolutely and positively no censorship done um, from the fringe organization. Anyone can do it. That's sort of what it's all about, being open access. It is community centered. Um, there isn't a lot of intra show, inter show rivalries. There's a lot of inter show cooperation. There is a broad sense of community that we're all in this together, that we're all uh, fighting the good fight against many forces that are currently against. Uh, the world of the performing arts in Los Angeles and beyond. And the concept behind this is that we are all one. That's sweet. I think that's sweet. Um, we are an opportunity to try uh, experimental work and new ideas. If you have an interesting thought, something you've always wanted to do, but didn't have the funds or the wherewithal to do a, an eight week run in a very expensive theater, this is a great place to do it. But it's also a place to refine existing work. If you have a touring show, if you have a show that you ran earlier in the year or a few years ago and you want to refine it and you want to bring it to a new audience, then this is absolutely an event that you can leverage. And it is, of course, fundamentally an opportunity to build new audiences. So if you are an existing company, we do have a lot of existing large companies that participate in the fringe, this is an opportunity to reach new audiences. I will say in a world, in a world, um, where, where the, the theater companies, larger the theater companies are crunching budgets, where we're seeing a lot of, of very large and established uh, reviews, papers, etc., reviewers' papers starting to fold. The fringe keeps getting bigger every year. 
And as the fringe is basically the birthplace of new theater in any given city, in Los Angeles specifically here, that's a very good sign. So for those of you who in the past couple weeks have been watching the news about LA Stage Times and LA Weekly and LA Times and all this sort of not so great news, think about that and feel good, is that the hatchery of theater in Los Angeles is actually growing year after year after year. And that's a very positive thought. Khan is saying I'm going too slow. I can hear him in my mind. I will uh, type as fast as you talk. So <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> what isn't it? What isn't the fringe? The fringe isn't a curated event. There is no huge balcony of men with beards <laughs> saying what <laughs> can and cannot happen in the fringe. It is not curated. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with curated festivals, and actually I've been to some amazing curated festivals. For those who saw Radar last year, you know what I'm talking about. This is not that, though. This serves a different purpose in the theatrical ecosystem. Big words. Um, it isn't. We get this every year. It isn't. Don't email us your play. Um, I'm glad you have a play. I wish more people had plays. But don't just email it to us and say, can you produce this? Because the answer is no. That's, sort of, that's not how it works. We can say we will help you find a producer. And for anyone who doesn't know what a producer does and always wondered, in a couple months, you will know. <laughs> you will figure out exactly what a producer does. Um, so please don't email us your scripts, or, or do. You might read them, but we're not going to produce them for you. This is a self-produced festival. Um, the Fringe is not an aesthetic. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I mean, uh, uh, some, every year I get complaints. This show that won this award, or this show that's getting the more tickets, it really doesn't deserve it because it's not fringy. This makes my skin crawl. Uh, there, is, there is such a thing as a fringy show. And a lot of fringe festivals only allow in fringy shows. I mean, and you know what I'm talking about, what a fringy show is. I'm not saying don't do a fringy show. God knows the Hollywood Fringe Festival has a lot of fringy shows, <laughs> and they're very popular when they're done very well. All I'm saying is that no one says you can't do Hamlet. You know, even the real full version of Hamlet, no one says you can't do that. No one says that you can't do Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. By all means, do Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Um, but uh, I, generally all I'm saying is, is that you can do whatever you want. Fringe is not an aesthetic, it is an operating model. So just keep that in mind when you're complaining about so-and-so's shows not being fringy enough. And the last one is a rule we've had since 2011. And interesting story around this one. Uh, but the rule is, is that no jerks allowed. Uh, and this is, this is actually funny. Because la the last year's first town hall, I don't know if I was being too abrasive or something, but the person in the front row, when I said that, just sort of went, oh, and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Uh, I wish we had video back then, because it was amazing. And I was like, all right, good. Rule working. Um, <laughs> So, so what do I mean by no jerks around? Like seriously, okay, Los Angeles, we all love Los Angeles, some more than others, but it has its jerks, right? And there's another word that we use to describe these people, I think you know what it is, but I'm gonna say jerks. Uh, what, this is what we try to avoid in the fringe. We try to be a loving, friendly, supportive atmosphere here, because we find that that's really, people leave and they have a great show, and they love that, and they had a good experience, and they had audience, and they, com they built community. What are they really really remember, they remember the great times, the great people, oh my god, I can't believe there's so many people like me, I don't feel so alone, it's fun, I made new friends, I have plans next year to have a producing partner to do a new thing at the Fringe, or next month to start on a new thing, that we're going to do a full run at the Hudson or something like that, that's really the important thing, so, so seriously, don't be a jerk. I can tell you it doesn't work on support. If you write on support and say, God damn it, why isn't your thing website working, you assholes? I'm just not going to respond. Uh, okay? But if, you, if you're nice and say, hey, I'm really having trouble, could please help me? Always remember, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Um, that is really important. Respect your venues. Respect the fringe organization. Respect the people you work with. Respect other people at the fringe. Respect, respect, respect. You will find the more respect you dish out, the more you shall receive. And the better your experience 
shall be. We all have the jerk instincts. Try to subvert the jerk instincts. Um, like the swimming with sharks, yelling at you sort of thing. Try to, try to subvert that. It's important. All right. That's what it is and what it isn't. Um, let's go through some important dates for those of you taking notes. One is already passed. February 1st, participant registration is open. You may now register for the fringe. A couple of you realized you could also do that last month, but ha 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 ha. Um, so February 1st, <laughs> registration for the fringe is open. And all the venues, a bunch of venues are there on the site right now. So you can see the venues that are currently participating. That doesn't mean you can't bring your own venues. We'll talk about that. Um, but there's a whole list of venues that are ready to take applications online, over the phone, the whole thing. Um, so you may absolutely begin to do that. You may absolutely pay your registration now and lock it down. Um, so yes, registrations are open. Um, March 25th at 7 PM at the Theater Asylum. That's Matt Quinn's venue right here. That is not correct. It is it? Yeah. No, it's a, that's the one at the Lily. Oh, it's at the Lily. Well, okay, okay, okay. It's a space. Okay, it's at it's at the Theater Asylum. Right? So last year there was confusion about the elephants, the Lily, and the Lily and the elephant. Okay, all of Theater Asylum. Matt Quinn of the Theater Asylum was now running that entire space, including the Lily. Um, so yeah, yeah, for Fringe, for the purposes of Fringe. So it's at the Lily Theater at the Theater Asylum venue for the purposes of what we're calling it in Fringe. Um, that is the first workshop. So this one is me talking at you, sorry, and followed by questions and answers. The workshop, what we do is we line up a bunch of fringe veterans, and you may ask them questions. Um, it's a very valuable uh, opportunity. Uh, so that is March 25th at 7 PM at the Lillian Theater in the Theater Asylum slash Elephant Complex, uh, run by this guy for the purposes of the fringe. March 25th, 7 PM. Um, it's also on the website as well, and we'll, you'll hear about more, more about it. Um, April 1st. Very important date for your, from your perspective. April 1st is the close of registration for those, in parentheses, for those who want to make the printed guide. Um, you may actually register for the Fringe whenever you like. We've had mid-festival registrations several times, so that can happen. But because we live in the world where physical things exist and there are these things called print deadlines, we must put a line in the sand and say you must be registered by this date. We'll talk about what registration is. Registration is not creating a project, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, April 6, 2 PM, the second town hall right here at the Hudson. Perhaps this, this space, perhaps another one, but uh, we will be in this facility. April 6, 2 PM, town hall 2. The focus will be on marketing your shows at, this po at that point. Um, April 15th. For those of you who want to buy a guide ad, a printed guide ad, in parentheses, you do. Because that's how you get a pretty picture in the guide for your show. Your registration includes a lot of text. Your guide ad is your picture, your image, the thing that you make beautiful, da da da, da. Um, The deadline for that is April 15th. Another important one, May 1st. Extremely important, because that is the day tickets go on sale to the general public. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. Uh, May 3rd is the second workshop. Uh, probably more less involved about marketing and more involved about selling tickets, production, getting used to the festival, all that sort of thing. There will be a line of people here to ask questions to. It will be awesome. Um, then May 11th. That date? Oh, uh, that date is May 3rd at 2 p.m. It's at the asylum. It's at 2 p.m. May 3rd at the asylum. For those of you who want to see this, you can go to hollywoodfringe.org forward slash daily. And that is the schedule of events. Uh, so forward slash daily is the schedule of events. Um, and that's so, so May 3rd, 2 p.m. workshop number two at Theater Asylum. May 11th, 2 p.m. Town Hall 3 at Hudson. Good? All right. May 29th. <laughs> Type faster. Come on, Megan. Uh, May. May May 29th is the Fringe Benefit. Um, last year we had the benefit uh, a little earlier than this. It wasn't great because there just weren't that many people paying attention. So we're having our benefit this year right up against it. So it's a huge network opportunity for all of you. Um, we'll be announcing that. Dave, can I tell them the place? Sure. It's at the King King. Um, which is a fun club on Hollywood Boulevard. Very, very arts friendly. A lot of fun. We had our first um, opening night party there in 2010 and it was a blast. Um, so May 29th, June 5th through June 10th. 
are previews, otherwise known as press previews. Um, this is the time to fill those houses with whatever seats you can make available so they might write reviews. June 5th through June 10th. June 11th, lots of dates. June 11th is the opening night party. And guess what? We do not allow you to schedule shows on that day because we all want you to take a moment and enjoy the thing that's about to begin. So you may not schedule. So to answer one big question, why can't I schedule shows on June 11th? It is because that is the day of the opening night party. We do not promote shows on that day. We do, however, promote shows on these days, June 12th through the 29th, approximately three weeks of Hollywood Fringe Festival. For those of you who haven't been with us in a couple years, yes, that is an extra week. Um, so June 12th through the 29th. And finally, June 29th is the awards ceremony and the closing night parties. I will not be taking your questions on the awards at this town hall. You all have questions about how might I win the awards, how are the awards going to be more fair, how changes are coming to the awards this year. It will all be answered in due time. Let us spend this wonderful time not talking about awards. How about that? <laughs> um, it's not my favorite thing. Let me put it this way. Because we're all in it. We're all great, right? OK. Um, <laughs> But we need your awards. We need awards because we want you guys to carry things out as you can, and you know the, the deserving get what they deserve, etc. All right. <laughs> Registration. Those are the dates. End of dates. No more dates a at all. Um, Registration. This is the part where I get to say, for those of you who have come to the town halls of the past, registration is a three-part process. I will say that again. Right now, for example, registration is a three-part process. Let's talk about step number one. Step number one is creating your project. And I don't mean the process of writing it and casting it. I'm talking about your <coughs> online representation of your project. Hollywoodfringe.org forward slash add underscore project. Or follow any of the various links throughout the site. We'll also take you there. Hollywoodfringe.org forward slash add underscore project a lot of you have already done it, creates your digital representation of your project. This will be your hub for ticket sales. That is the link you can give for ticket sales. Note there's also a shortcut link, which is right there, shortened URL link, which is usually hff14.org forward slash your project number that you can put on Twitter and other things, digital and print. Um, so yes, creating your project, step one. Um, you may post pictures, you may post videos. You may tag your project. You may not lose your voice. Or you may. It's up to you. Um, you may add tags to your project. My show is funny, wild, crazy, sexy, loving, stuff like that. You may add that to your show. Um, as I said, uh, it also is a place where collected, you collect reviews for the show where people might see reviews from other fringers and etc. Um, note, nothing, nothing, nothing is locked in technically ever. When you add your information, you don't have all the information, you might say, untitled show about a snowman eating zombies sort of thing. Like you can put that in there if you like. We'll still approve it. Um, note that by April 1st, which if you've been paying attention, is the guide deadline, that needs to be solid. Whatever's there on April 1st is going in the guide when it goes to the printer. You may continue to change it, not recommend it, but you may continue to change it, like dot, 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 and vampires, like if you want, you know, as, whatever you want to do it. So just so you know, um, don't feel pressure to have all the answers immediately. Um, but you do want to create that as soon as possible, because then you can go use it to apply to venues, you can start your basic um, fundraising and marketing and whatnot, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, so that is basically part one, creating a project. And as part one of a three-step process. So add, create a project. Number two, search for venues. I mentioned it before. I haven't changed my mind since. Yes, you do need to find your own venue. We've given you a great list to start from. It's on the website. You can go to hollywoodfringe.org forward slash venue forward slash list. Venue forward slash list. Or click the venues link at the very top. You will see a list of about 20 venues that have already uh, submitted their information or are taking fringe applications. Um, so that's important. I would recommend you do it now. 
We're seeing a lot more interest this year than ever before. And where does that most? And it's people trying to get the prime time slots at the venues. If you are a venue, please raise your hand. Yes. What is your venue? Uh, theater Asylum and Elephant's Space. Excellent. The Complex. Excellent. Who else? Yes. We're trying to become a venue. Well done. What name? Do you have a name? Uh, it's the Hope Lutheran Church in Hollywood. Awesome. Very good. Yes, sir. Oh, underground. The Underground. Uh, uh, over there in the corner. Theater of Note. Theater of Note. You guys didn't stop me. Theater of Note over here and over here. The Cupcake Theater. The Cupcake Theater. It's nice to have you on board right here. Studio C artist, nice to have you with us again. Um, anyone else? Mike Abramson, if he were here, would say Hudson, and that's where we are right now. And yes? I have a question. Yes? When we first started, it was Central Are you standing? A little bit. We'll talk about that in a second. We'll talk about that in a second. Very, very little bit. We'll talk about that, and we can talk after if you need us to expand it a little more. But we'll, we'll talk about it. Okay, yeah. So potentially right here as well. So, okay. Now, during the mixer, a lot of these people will be here. After this, they will theoretically not run out. Before that, you may talk to them right now <laughs> about booking your venue if, if you like. Um, you may also apply online. If you create your project and you're logged in as yourself and you go to a venue page, you'll see a big link at the top of the venue page that says apply now. You're going to need to do this anyway to finalize your booking from our perspective. So we know that you can register, that you have a venue, that you've added performances, et cetera, et cetera. So go ahead, look through the, look through the venues. A lot of them have videos, so you can actually do a little online walkthrough. Um, some of them are older venue, <laughs> venue videos. Um, some of them are newer. Um, and, and then apply to them. Um, we suggest then following up. Phone calls, visiting if you're local, scheduling a walkthrough time. Um, get a contract with your venue. Nothing in this life is real until you have a contract. So make sure you have a contract. Make sure you understand on paper what your performance days and times are. Your venue will add your performances for you. Um, it is your responsibility, however, to make sure they are right. There's nothing that sucks more than the printed guide goes to the print and it comes back and there's incorrect information. Okay? They're going to do their best to make sure that they're accurate. It's your job to make sure they are. Trust me, once you've registered and we're locking things down with a guide, you will get many an email saying, check your listing, check your listing, check your listing, check your listing. So here's my advice. Check your listing. Okay, great. Um, that's the venue thing. As far as the boundaries of where one might have a venue. We've expanded ever so slightly this year. To the north, Franklin. Everyone knows it, should know it. To the east, um, this is the change. Western. We've moved from Wilton to Western. So you have a little more, ooh, a block. <laughs> <laughs> to the east. Two blocks, two blocks, two blocks. <laughs> to these, yeah, this is Wilton. So underground came on, we moved to Wilton, <coughs> and we have some more folks coming on now that we're moving to Western. Um, to the south, Melrose. There was a place there. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and to the west, La Brea. Now, now, if you're a couple like, doors down from each of those to the east, west, north, or south, talk to us and we might be able to fit you in. There's already a few exceptions that are like, eh, no, 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 they're right there. Um, it's our, it's our, what we want to do is we want to balance two things. We want to balance the idea of a centrally located festival license of place, an idea that you can walk between shows, which is good for everyone, um, or at least tram between shows, very briefly, um, a bike if you're Stephen Lee Morris. Um, but what we, uh, at the same time, uh, we want to create as many opportunities for you guys uh, so we can try to keep costs down, so there's a, a market, so people don't need to step out and not do the fringe because they can't find a venue. So we're balancing those two things together, which is why we have the geographic boundaries. Okay. Um, we talked about that, we talked about that, we talked about that, we talked about that, we talked about that. We're going to talk about budget. Just think about that until we talk about it. Um, okay. Th that is step two of a three-step process. Step one, add project. Step online. Step two, find venue in the world and online. Step three, register for the fringe. This is the final thing you absolutely need to do. Um, <laughs> my baby. Um, uh, 
Uh, what does your registration get you, you might ask, and that is a fair question. This is what your registration gets you. It gets you a listing in the printed guide that includes the title of your show, your performances, your venue, the company, a description of your show, uh, the category in which your show is in, and several other things. Uh, so you'll, you'll, your age range, is there flashing lights, is there nudity, that sort of thing is included in your listing. Information that helps people choose your show in the printed guide. Um, registration gets you a listing on the Fringe site. Um, to give you an idea, during the Fringe period last year, which is basically now through June, one million hits on the Fringe site. Expecting more this year. So the Fringe site is your absolute best place to market your show from an online perspective. <coughs> Ticket sales. You, we sell tickets for you um, via our mobile app, via our walk-up location, via the website, and via phone. Website better than phone. Um, but uh, we, we sell the tickets for you. So you may sell, we're going to talk about this later, but you may sell absolutely some of your tickets through any medium you want, but you must sell at least 50% of your tickets through fringe venues. And you'll find that a lot of people sell 100% and they do very, very well. Um, just so you know, some people use Gold Star for 30% and they get rid of those. But mainly when people buy tickets for the Fringe, they buy it through the mobile, through the walk-up, through the phone, and through the web. Um, discounted flyer distribution, something very big burden that we take off your shoulders. Discounted photography solutions. Discounted ads in the Fringe site, in the Fringe guide. Um, inclusion in our LA Weekly spreads, if there is ample interest this year in that. Um, we get you discounted notices and periodicals such as Backstage and um, LA Weekly. We get you participant support, again, support at hollywoodfringe.org to help you through the whole process. People have called us producer training school before and one of the venues through which, venues through which we provide you that training is through these events and support. Seasoned producers are more than, more than welcome. If you've never produced a show before in your life, what I can say is that you are not alone at the fringe. And a lot of first time producers have had very financially and, uh, and, and, and reception successes. Um, just go to these events, listen to the stuff we get you, pay attention, take notes, um, do your own thing, be unique, and you will have success at the fringe. Oh, and you know, do a good show. Um, <coughs> there's that. Um, fringe coverage by Fringe TV. Fringe TV is our uh, sort of our. our, it's our television network um, where we show interviews with these guys, we promote with you guys, we promote the festival as a whole. More information on that soon. Qualification for awards, we talked about that and now we're not going to talk about it. Also qualifications for extensions because isn't it sad when your show ends in June. There have been a lot of, right now there's an extension actually going on that's, that's actually very successful from our last Fringe Festival. Um, there's been a lot of post Fringe extensions, it goes into new life. Uh, we've had a couple have been picked up by Samuel French, for example. Hey. Um, they they're originated at Fringe shows. So just so you know, it's, we love it. We love it when there is a future. New York Fringe loves it too because they had urine town. And unlike New York Fringe, we don't take 1% of all future revenues. New York Fringe is still uh, collecting the bucks from urine town, let me tell you. Um, reviews in the press or what press is left. And we will talk about that at a later date. Um, you are participated in a promoted event. We are a promoted event and you may participate in it. And so all of the ad buys we do, and we do a lot of them, and it goes up by five figures every year. Uh, we buy ads in the LA Weekly, we buy ads in Backstage, we buy ads in uh, KPCC, our local NPR affiliate, Discover Hollywood, Facebook, oh, we're all over Facebook. We have billboards, we're gonna have more billboards this year. So you know, Khan, can I tell him? We have a big billboard right there this year. So right in the middle uh, of the, at Vine and uh, Santa, Monica. Santa Monica, there will be a big weirdly square um, billboard uh, right there towering into the sky. So that's some good news as well as billboards other, elsewhere through our friends at Clear Channel um, Outdoor. Um, and this year, this year, you all wanted it in 2010 and now you have it. We have pole signs this year. <laughs> so, You've seen them, you've learned about things on them. They are the signs that go up and down the road that happen again and again and again and seem to all be from LACMA or Red Cat. Now, we too, 
we too will be, or CTG, how could I forget, will be on those pulse signs. So that's the good news. Uh, we'll have pulse signs in this neighborhood, we'll have pulse signs coming into this neighborhood. So we're trying to establish a much broader audience for people. So more billboards and pulse signs. Um, so that's fantastic. And more important than anything, guys, what do you get? You get fun. It's fun. Remember when this was fun? It actually is fun. Um, it's fun. It's fun to meet people. It's fun to network. It's fun to have opportunities. People have fun. People call it the theater party that never ends until July. Um, but it, it, it is it's very much a big, long party for artsy folks, and it's really, really fun. Um, all right. That's what you get. If you want any more, you can't have it. Okay. You want my blood to? Okay. Um, one thing, one, one word of note for those that are not in this room. So I'll talk to you. For those of you that are international and couldn't be here with us today, say everyone in Guten Tag. I said no German. No German. No German. <laughs> um, for those of you that are international, um, check out uh, hollywoodfringe.org forward slash learn and click on the international participation link. There are several ways that you might come into this country. They are listed there. Read that, get started now because it's a bit of a process. Um, and write us immediately for a recommendation letter, letter so you can get across the border. Thanks and good luck. Godspeed. Okay. Excellent. How are we doing on time? Bad. Okay. <laughs> Oh, we're doing great. Okay, Super Bowl hasn't even started yet. Anybody watching? Anybody uh, uh, like pissed that we had this on Super Bowl Sunday? Raise your hand. I won't judge. Um, anyone already started drinking? Okay. <laughs> okay. Believe it or not, we didn't do this on purpose, um, which is why we moved it uh, to, to noon. So sorry about that. Enjoy the gig. <laughs> um, all right. We're going to talk about financial planning. Yeah, it's actually extremely important. It's something to think about right. Now, it is not in our interest that you have a financially bad experience at the fringe. It is possible to lose money. It is possible, very possible, to break even. And it is even possible, as a lot of people will tell you, to make money if you do it well. So listen closely, and we're going to try to help you not lose money. We don't want you to. And everything we throw at you, is to help you not lose money and to have a successful show. So listen closely. Um, first of all, keep an eye on your money. And what does this mean? This means actually breaking out some sort of spreadsheet program and putting together a budget to do it now. Start thinking about a draft budget, how much you can afford, what your price points are going to be, what you need to spend money on. If you have any questions on what you might need to spend money on, ask it at the Q&A if we ever get there. Um, ask like what money, I'm going to give you a, a few things. Your basic to do a fringe show, this is what you need to pay. First of all, registration. That is step three of the three step process. We're going to start three and go back. Um, step three, registration. Getting all that stuff that I just mentioned being officially a part of the Hollywood Fringe Festival. If you have a multi-performance show where you charge money at the door, more than one performance and you charge money at the door to patrons that you then take. Um, that is $250, 250. If you have either a one-off show, one performance, whereby you accept money or don't accept money, we don't care, or you have a multi-performance show where you do not charge at the door or on the website or on the mobile or on the phone or anything else, then it is 175, 175. Um, we don't give anyone discounted or free registration based on that whole fairness thing. Everyone's in it together. Everyone's doing the same thing. This money goes directly towards marketing the show as a whole. I promise you it doesn't go into my salary. This goes towards marketing the, the festival as a whole. Okay. <clears throat> that is the registration fee. Venue rental. Another thing to keep in mind is venue rental. Venue costs. They, they vary wildly. So shop around to get an idea. Contact these venues, get an idea about how much it costs. Um, some do it on a package basis. Some do it on a per performance basis. You will need to check with them to figure out how they do it. So by all means, add, just determine how many performances that you want, 
how much you think realistically you can fill and add those amount of performances and add that into your budget. Always think a little, okay, with art and love, think positively and broadly and optimistically. With money, think pessimistically. <laughs> think worst case scenario. Think just below average and budget with that. And try to achieve on the books break even with just below average diminished expectations. If it turns out that you have a hit, guess what? It's all gravy. It's all money that you're going to make, which is what we want to happen. Okay, we talked about registration fee, 250 and 175. We talked about venue rental, varies. Contact your local venues. Production fees, I can tell you right now, I said it before, no one expects a dinosaur flying on the stage carrying people off with a chopper coming down and spilling gunfire all over the audience and then dancing swimming pools. I don't know what a dancing swimming pool is, <laughs> uh, but no one expects that out of a fringe show. And what's more, your venue probably needs you to get that dancing swimming pool out in 15 minutes. So no dancing swimming pools, not required. Um, uh, let me put it this way. Who's seen the Fantastics? Longest running was off-Broadway show in New York history. Guess what the set was for that show? It was a box in the middle of the stage. Maybe some chairs. Um, huge, yeah, and a wall. And a wall. <laughs> huge hit. That's all it required. Um, so think that way. Think, think on that level. If you want to add some set dressing and stuff like that, then that's fantastic because it brings people in and we all like nuts sets and that sort of thing. But think on a budget. Think creatively. Um, creativity is, is rewarded more than just dumping money into things because you're going to need to get that stuff off quick and, and load it back on within 15 minutes. So when you're thinking about production values, uh, uh, think about the the acting, uh, the, the lighting you can do and the design you can do within the budget when the restrictions of the space, think about the actual work itself. Think about those production values. No one is expecting Miss Saigon, okay? Uh, so so just, 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 just know about that. And then marketing fees. Always have some money left over from marketing. I got some news for you. You can, can market a fringe show for zero dollars in this day and age. We're going to talk about the new normal. We're going to talk about the, 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 the whole like, lack of press covering the theater. And everyone's going to be really bummed about that. But as I say, look on the optimistic side. The tools that theater producers have available to them for free today dwarf what we had even seven years ago. They're huge. There's so much you can do for spending absolutely no money. So it's always a balance. There's always a balance. And that's the good news. Um, so think about marketing fees. Now, that, that's not that I suggest you spend nothing on marketing. I suggest that you do have a line item for marketing if you can't afford it. Okay, we're going to talk about math now. I'm going to keep it super basic because like as far as the math goes, basic multiplication. This will go in, I'll, I'll repeat it. Just, just, this will go into your budget. If you don't know how to use a spreadsheet, you don't necessarily need one. You just need a calculator, right? Um, uh, so, so a spreadsheet's best calculator also works. Um, set your ticket prices. Okay, in the world of fringe, there are three types of ticket prices. There's the regular ticket price. This price is very regular. It is what the general public pays as they come in. The regular ticket price, I can let you know right now that the average ticket price is barely moved over the course of the past four years has been $12. That is the average. If you're doing a higher production musical type thing or something that you know has a built-in audience that you know people are going to come and see, people have gone up to $15. Some have even gone up to $20 and had success. But know this. Know this. If you set your price at $25, you are working against the grain and you better have a name and an existing uh, audience base that will come see you to pay that much money. That is a word of warning. The two things in Fringe that, are, that, that people base their schedule around are price and duration. Um, a lot of people want to go see many shows a day. Those are the two things, that's the two things that a patron of the Fringe spends on. They spend money and they spend time. So if you have a show that's an experimental show, and you put two and a half hours as the duration, know this, 
you are working against a certain level of expectation. Because people will say, I, $12 is okay, I'll spend $12, but do I want to spend two and a half hours on this clown show in the swimming pool that's flying in the rafters? People, pe people, people really like think, think that way. So know that from a length perspective, the average 45 to 55 minutes. That is the average. And that's not saying you can have a four hour full rendition, rendition of Kenneth Bronick's Hamlet with Kenneth Bronick. I mean, you probably could charge a little more for that. But that doesn't mean that you can't have that. You can't absolutely have that. But no, the longer it is, you're working against something. The shorter it is, then people are like, it's a half an hour. What the hell? I might as well. And that's what people's minds are when going to see friends. It's not like the rest of time where people say, I'm going to see the opera, I'm going to pay $150 for it, wear my suit and tuxedo and tails, and I'm going to the opera. Ha <laughs> ha, let's go. That's not what people think of this. They think, I'm wearing my jeans, I'm wearing sneakers so I can get around venues as quickly as possible. I'm running from show to show to show to show to show to get the most of the experience. That's the mindset that people are when they are fringing, and it is a verb. Um, FYI. Okay, I promised you math. And here it is. <coughs> this is the formula. For the nightly gross, your nightly gross, important formula. Capacity, how many seats can you sell in your space? Um, some venues have multiple spaces. This is the Hudson venue, and we're in the main stage space. This is the main stage space. This is the space, this is the venue. This is the terminology we use. Um, so the amount of seats, for example, unsurprisingly, there are exactly 99 seats in this venue. Um, that is probably the maximum that you'll be working with for union reasons that are frankly a little too complex and boring for me to go over right here. But ask anybody who's been around LA in a while and they'll tell you why there are 99 seats in this venue right here. Um, so capacity times capacity times ticket price times sell through rate. And remember when I talked about um, optimism in love and art and pessimism in money. This is where the pessimism comes into play. What percentage of the house do I expect to sell? Um, I can tell you when I was producing theater, um, I would always budget with 40%. It's high enough to feel like, okay, people are going to come see my show. Uh, but it's not so high that, A, I'm budgeting in the clouds and I'm having dreams about how many people come to see the show. 40% is a good number, but adjust that. Adjust that based on your expectations. If you have never produced theater before and you have zero following, welcome. This is the place for you, so welcome. Good job. Way to be here. Uh, way to try something new. Maybe 40% is too high. Maybe you want to budget with 35 or 30%. Something for you to think about. So that formula, again, is your nightly gross. Gross meaning the total amount that you make a night. Capacity times ticket price times sell-through rate. Um, that is one night. Multiply by that, by the number of performances you have, and you have your total gross income. And good news for all of you about that, you get 100% of that back. We don't keep a dime of your box office income that is sold through the fringe. Now, thank you, thank you. <laughs> now, your venue might have a different deal. They might say that tickets sold at the door. Your venue, as a part of your deal, might take a piece of that. It's rare, but it does happen. Um, so note that in your contract. But if you sell through the website or the mobile or through the walk-up or through uh, me on the street with the little square, then um, you get 100% of that back. Um, so you can count that in your budget. What you sell, you get back. Okay, we talked about capacity times ticket price times sell-through rate times number of performances equaling your total ticketing gross. Now, now we're, we're doing some Excel shit. Now, you've got your total gross across all of your performances. Then you have your budget of expenses on the other side. Production, registration, marketing, and venue. Total ticketing gross. Compare these two numbers. Are your expenses higher than your ticketing gross? Don't freak out. Sometimes you're really lucky and you have this. 
most of the time you have this. Don't freak out, because guess what that gap number is? Anyone? That is your fundraising nut right there. That is the money that you need to raise through Kickstarter, through Indiegogo, through your friends and parents, through whatever. You know, you have a, you have a, a dying uncle who has a will. Don't kill him. I'm just, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> um, but you, you know what I'm saying. It's phil philanthropic. That is, that, that is the amount you need to raise. If you're a 501c3, awesome. It's a little easier. But you do not need to be a 501c3 to have a Kickstarter. Um, you can absolutely have a Kickstarter. Almost everyone does. If you have a Kickstarter, we will help you promote it through our Twitter account. So by all means, make a lot of noise on it as well. If anybody needs help on how to raise money, we will certainly, as a question asked uh, during the workshop, because everyone who will be standing up here, veteran fringers, have raised monies for their show. Um, so keep in mind. So we got that total expenses, total, total expenses, total income difference. That's what you need to fundraise. Start working on this now. Um, OK, there we are. So that is all the math that I will talk about today. Um, so that, that's the budget. Any questions about that, ask during the Q&A, and we'll certainly go over it. Um, OK, a little bit on marketing. This isn't the marketing town hall. We're not going to talk much about marketing. Um, that's next time. What I'll do is I'll plant a little seed in your minds about marketing, stuff that you want to start working on right now. Um, first of all, flyers. Flyers have art on them. Um, flyers are two-sided people. Flyers are not one-sided. It just makes me angry when I say a one-sided flyer. Do not, do not save the one cent an item with the two-sided, one-sided flyer. Get two-sided flyers because you will suffer in comparison because 99% of other fringers have two-sided flyers. So I said my piece on two-sided flyers. It's one of my things. Also, card stock people. Card and stock. Do not do it on eight and a half and eleven pieces of paper because they things get hot and they crimp and they stack poorly and they take up too much space and it looks amateur-ish. The prices that flyers cost right now, you can make a very professional looking flyer for not that much at all. And we will give you places that will produce them for cheap. Um, so if you're doing the traditional flyer, card stock two-sided. And one more thing. Um, you must, you must, you must, and we're going to remind you of a few, this, a few, about this a few times. But you need to put the Hollywood Fringe logo on your flyers. Why? I'm not just being a jerk about this. I'm not just saying you need to do it because we're megalomaniacs and we love seeing our logo. I'm doing this because at the Fringe Central facility, wherever that might be, don't even ask. Don't even ask where it might be. <laughs> um, wherever that might be. We get a lot of people dropping flyers off. Not all of them are fringers. The only way that we know for sure that it is a fringer and not someone whose flyers go into the refiling bin um, is because of that logo. Um, so we know you're a Hollywood fringe participant. Um, so put the logo on your flyers. It's not intrusive. It's blocky letters. It's easy to put on. Where might you get the logo, you ask. I'm going to give you another URL. Hollywood Fringe, not French, dot org forward slash branding. Branding, B R A N D I N G. There you may download for right now JPEG, EPS, PDF versions of the logo. For your designers' benefit, use the EPS version. If you're not a designer, you have no idea what that is. Trust me. Use the EPS version. Do not use the JPEG version. JPEGs are a size. They make them small. They look like crap. You make them larger. They really look like crap. EPS versions can go wee, whoa, wee, whoa. So um, your designer will thank you. Um, speaking of which, part of that marketing budget, think about a designer. A lot of former fringe participants have had some very clever art. It can only help. Because the key is distinguishing yourself. And if you distinguish yourself through a hooky show, uh, I'll explain what a hooky show is. I just made that term up. Um, it's a show with a hook. Um, it, or a, uh, a beautiful, interesting, engaging art, then fantastic, like awesome. Um, we're going to do this every year. We have a design contest. We're going to announce that in a bit for, who, uh, for what the design on the uh, the fringe guide cover will be. We're also going to have a t-shirt design contest this year. Um, there's a lot of, for very cheap, if you don't know any, 
designers, and a lot of us don't, and you're looking for some solutions on how to get an interesting design, you can use what we use, which is a service called 99designs.com, which is basically running a internet contest, as you were. So for as low as a couple hundred bucks, you can say, create me an interesting cover art for my show. Here's the description. And there'll be people will submit. You'll have multiple rounds. You can pick finalists and then choose a winner. Um, that's an interesting crowdsourced method of getting um, an actual cool design. Or use your friends. Use that designer friend who's just out of RISD, who's really looking for to build up their portfolio. Look for that person. So um, OK. Talk about design. We talk about okay. We talk about flyers. So great, 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 great. We're gonna talk about flyer etiquette later. Flyer etiquette is another thing I'm really big on. So uh, we'll talk about that later. Okay, we're we're still talking. Okay, social networking is still free most of the time. Um, Facebook, get a Facebook page. When I did this four years ago, I was like, who's heard of a Facebook page? And everyone's like, uh, everyone's heard of a Facebook page. Get a Facebook page for your show today. Like, go ahead, go crazy. Get a Facebook page for your show. Start collecting people. Um, Facebook has done a very annoying thing where once you attract all these f followers and you post, you only get up with your organic post, you get a minute fraction of those followers. And you need to pay them to boost the post. It's annoying because you feel like, I collected those followers. Why the hell can't I market to them like I wanted to in the beginning? That's the bad news. The good news is that boosted posts are cheap and they work very well. Um, so for a couple bucks, you can boost your, po your post, and hundreds more people can see it. So that's, the, that's the, the bad and the good, the balance. We're in the world of balance. OK, Twitter. Um, I said HFF14. I'll also say LA Theater, pound sign L-A-T-H-T-R, LA Theater. Very active day by day post. For those of you who are doing theater, um, theatre, that, that, that is a very good place to do it on the LA Theater. Hashtag L A T H E E A T R. Um, one big, ten. what? One ten. One ten? It's one ten. It's one ten. Oh, that's the time. It's also a highway. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing well. We're, we're actually doing well. D110. Also, uh, uh, everyone heard of Big Cheap. Um, big Cheap is a Yahoo group. It is a great way to reach all of the Big Cheap people on the LA Theater world. And there are a lot of them. Couple thousand on that group. So join the yacht if you're again in theater. Um, it doesn't work as well for non-theater stuff. Um, check out the big cheap Yahoo group. With one post, you can get a couple thousand people who actually follow and create theater. It's very useful. Um, show blogs. Blogs used to be bigger than they are right now. Let's face it. Um, but blogs are still an excellent way to uh, promote your show. I read blogs every day. Um, um, network, network, network. Um, start as soon as you can. Congratulations, you are here. Sorry. Congratulations, you are here. <laughs> um, networking is key. I'm going to throw a book at you even. Uh, for those of you who like to read interesting books, um, Malcolm Gladwell's The Tipping Point. Um, it's really, really interesting. Get it on Audible and listen to it. It's about the um, mechanics, the anatomy. I'm giving ads to all sorts of big companies. The anatomy of a phenomenon. Um, and it gives lots of examples about what, what makes a big thing a big thing. Um, and it breaks it down and gives you lots of great tips. One of the things it talks about is, is, is are mavens and connectors. I'll touch on those really quickly. Mavens are people who seem to know everything and seem to know everything that's going on. Um, they are the people that say, they're the, and you'll find these people at the fringe, the people who see 75 shows a day. OK, it's be hard. <laughs> the people who see 75 shows, then they know everything. And what's more, everyone knows they know everything. So they'll go to them and say, what should I see? Reminder, you ask me, what should I see? I'm going to go, ha, 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 ha. Um, If you ask a maven, a fringe maven, what to see, then they'll say, oh, you should see this, you should see this, you should see this, you should see this. This was awesome. This is terrible. Da, 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 da. Talk to them, these mavens. Seek them out. Let them know about your show. Invite them. Give them free tickets. You will figure out who they are by coming to events like this. Seek out the fringe mavens. And then connectors, people who don't necessarily know everything, but they know everybody. Um, so people who seem to have, like you can see them on Facebook, the people with the obnoxious people with 5,000 friends. Um, it's, it's like people who seem to know everyone at fringe. There's a lot of those people that aren't on staff. Get to know them 
invite them to your show, get them in your house for free, they will talk because they know a lot of people. So think about the social aspects. It's not just, hey, how you doing? You want to have a beer? There are actual non-LA obnoxious ways of networking um, that benefits everyone. So think about networking. If you don't personally do networking very well because you're mean and you like it that way, <laughs> then get somebody on your team who does that. Um, a lot of people are like, I'm an artist. The fuck do I need to do to talk to other people? I create. OK, that's great. <laughs> I'm glad for you. Well done. We need you in this world. But then you need someone that other people aren't going to hate to represent your show. You know what I'm talking about. OK. OK, press plan. Does everyone remember press? OK, so there's been some issues in the past several weeks with press as it comes to theater. That, so what does that mean? OK, so Backstage doesn't do reviews anymore. So LA Weekly is significantly ramping down. So LA Stage Times is kind of closing. Uh, so these are all obviously very bad news for the community. But that doesn't mean you can't get press to come see your show. There are lots of other places. And if you go to hollywoodfringe.org, forward slash learn, there is a article there with the word press in it. I think it's press awareness is the name of the article. And thanks to our friend Colin Mitchell at Bitter Lemons who supplied this list. Bitter-lemons.com will be a very big part of your life soon if it isn't already. Um, uh, there's a list of press there. We don't give you emails of press because they think that's obnoxious if you do that. Um, it's very, very easy, though, to find out who the big press players are if you go to those sites, the Press Awareness article, follow up on those sites. I'm going to give you a tip. I'm sorry, publicists in the crowd. Don't hire a publicist. Publicists are expensive. They take your money, and then they post a press release to their meager press release, and they say, that'll be $2,000. Listen, a lot of people do really well. They're great publicists, and they, 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 they do their work well. A lot of them, however, beware, cannot necessarily help you in your position. If it's between, if you're an artist, um, and you do the art thing, and it's between paying $2,000 for a publicist, or giving a break of the gross or the profits with a producer, get a producer. Do not get a publicist. We give you, listen. I'm sorry, publicist. It's not rocket science. Like putting together a press list, talking to people, getting the word out there, knowing, getting, you know, befriending people. If you have someone who is in your team and who is a part of your team, like legitimately helping you create this art, they are going to be with you, much more motivated, and they're going to be out there hitting the streets, literally getting people, throwing people into the theater. This is the partner you want. You don't want someone to say, Press release, there you go, and then you get an invoice. Um, if you are CTG, then it makes sense having a publicist. Uh, if you're doing a fringe show, learn to do it yourself or find a partner who's willing to learn to do it themselves. It's, an, it's, it's important. And, it, and we're going to talk about the next time a lot of methods, in the next workshop, a lot of methods by which you can do this. Time? Okay, we're actually, we're actually, we're, we're good, we're good, we're good. Um, another thing, I mentioned before that you are all fundamentally a business. We're arts people, we think business can be bad. Okay, try to think yourself a little bit. Think of yourself as an art business and think, think of your show. If you want people to pay money to come see your thing, guess what? Sorry, you have a product. You have a product that you're trying to sell. When you're thinking about art, think about the art. You're thinking about the art, and that's great. That's how the best art is invented. But when you're thinking about the producing side, think about the business. Like, like think, we talk a lot about money. There's a reason we talked about money. Because no one likes losing money. Uh, no one likes no one showing up in their audience. Think about your shows as a product. And basic business 101, when marketing your product, you need to know your audience. And that is extremely important. Your audience isn't people who go to theater in LA. That's not your audience. Because you want to break beyond that anyway. One of the cool things about Fringe is it breaks into new non-theatrical audiences. Not people who don't pay $75 to go to a CTG show, or less for some of their smaller things. People who have never seen a show in their life come to Fringe shows. Don't limit yourself. And be specific. 
People come up in the, in the business world and they cre- actually have, they, they create like people. They even give them names. Jane works in a grocery store and at night she likes to see art movies mostly directed by Spanish speakers, stuff like that. Actually write that information, write those profiles down of your audience. And then think, where does this person, where does Jane, who works in a grocery store and loves to see Spanish speaking movies, where does she shop? Where does she hang out? Where does she occupy? You know, think about those things and base your marketing plan around that. Throw that in your marketing mix. And because it can be multifaceted, right? Because you have these profiles of people who will see your show. Now think about each of them, what they do. Take your marketing budget and then break it down around that. It could be as simple as I have a show about Frodo's afterlife in Lord of the Rings or whatever. Um, pound sign L-O-T-R would probably be interested in learning more about your show. Stuff like that. Think of that way. We had a zombie show a little while ago and like they would go to like cemeteries and stuff, right, to promote their show. And, like, stores. Yeah, like what stores? Comic book stores. Comic book stores. That's perfect. If you have a zombie show, go to comic book stores. That's where they all go. <laughs> <laughs> And like, think about getting your poster in the comic book stores. Think smart. Think about your audience. Don't cast a wide net. You don't have the money to cast a wide net either. Like, like we can just barely afford pole signs. You cannot. Uh, so think about specifics. Think about being specific about your profile. We'll talk more about this. But now, as an exercise, everyone go home, sit around with your pr- production team, and write out the names of these fake people that might exist in the real world who would go see a show and be interested in figuring out where they go. Example, we found out that people who listen to talk radio, they still see theater. It's amazing. So one of our sponsors is KPCC. And we are all over KPCC in June. Um, this is what we've, we've found by doing this exercise. And it's been extremely successful. So think about that. OK, great. Um, and yes, as I said, this is an introduction to marketing. <gasps> To, uh, another workshop, bless you, and another town hall will happen in the future on this. Excellent. All right. So just a couple more things. We'll get to Q&A. A, um, for those of you who would like to work on the Fringe, we do have a staff opening. We are looking for a volunteer coordinator. Uh, this will be a person who is in charge of interns and volunteers and, getting the, and spreading interns out and managing schedules and stuff like that. It's very fun. Very critical to us. If you're working with all of us, it's a good if you or anyone you know might be interested in this staff position, please write jobs at hollywoodfringe.org. That's, I don't see anybody writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> jobs at hollywoodfringe.org. And uh, that's where they might send their resume. We're definitely looking for that aggressively. Um, um, and um, we talked about the 99 designs thing. The design competition is coming up. We'll be, we'll be uh, boosting about that soon. Um, the last thing, OK, and we've talked about this through it all. And you ask that question. This is the final thing I'll say before Q&A. It's the big question. And I get this question a lot, weirdly, personally, by press during the thing. Is of, well, so why do you do this? Uh, and that's a fair question. Um, but I'm not talking about why I do this. Let's talk about why we do this, why we do this. Like, what the hell? is wrong with us. Like, why are, we, why are we doing theater and cabaret and all these sorts of things now in LA? There's this like, place where they make movies. And that's all, it's a movie town, right? That's what it is. Well, guess what? Like, it's interesting. I, I was against this crap when we first started uh, uh, doing this, uh, this planning, this thing in, in Hollywood, in Los Angeles. It's like, oh, I really live in a theater town. What are you doing? This is going to be a total failure. That's really, really strange. Because the first year we did this, we became the third largest performing arts festival in the country. So now we're at least number two. Depending on how you count, we're number one in the country. So don't tell me that LA isn't a performing arts town. Um, There's just simply too many actors here, guys. (laughs) It's just math, okay? Actors who miss this stuff who missed this, right? Now, I've always said, what, what do we need in this town, though, that we don't have? We have lots of film producers, obviously. We have lots of actors, obviously. What do we need more of? Public we need more. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Public executions. We need more producers. And guess what? Now, you walk through these doors. All of you are official. We have a club. Official producers now. 
Uh, you are producing a show. You, if, you, if you don't know how to produce, guess what? You're going to learn real fast by fire. And it's going to be fun and challenging. You're going to cry a few times, but that's okay. <laughs> 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 so, 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 so seriously, even in the, the tough parts, know that we're here to support you. You know that you're here to support you. Know that there is a community. Why do I do this? I do this because of you guys. You guys give me inspiration to do this. And what's more, I know that you give you inspiration as well. And for those of you who have never been with us, you will learn that quick. You will learn that the best thing about this thing is the community. It's about the friendships, about the relationships, professional and personal. Um, so after all the crap and the fighting for audiences and the money issues and the successes and the triumphs and the <laughs> disasters and the venues on fire and all those sorts of things, know that in the end you're going to walk out um, with lots of awesome battle stories, lots of new friends. If you're not a jerk, go back to the first one, and lots of fantastic memories. Okay, in every room, everyone in this room who's done this before will be able to tell you stories. Just ask them about stories. There's amazing ones. Con and I were once chasing a UPS truck because that's where the t-shirts were and the opening party was starting in two hours. We were literally chasing a UPS truck around the streets of Hollywood. That's just one little smidgen of what I'm talking about. OK. Um, all right. Now it's a section. Uh, are we like roughly at 20? OK. This is the question and answer section. So when you get to talk and ask questions, a couple rules. Yes, everyone remembers kindergarten. Please raise your hand. <laughs> Please raise your hand, otherwise we'll have, it'll be a mess. Um, too many people. And when you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you do raise your hand, you're called upon. I'll try to go back and forth. Hopefully everyone will get a chance to ask their question. Um, uh, you might want to say, uh, stand and proclaim your show and uh, who you are. Give your name and any company you might belong to. Um, so without further ado, any questions? Yes. Yeah, uh, Alan, producer of the Flyover State, uh, it's our first year at the Fringe, and I just wondered about trams. It occurs to me you got the big area, people would like to walk, they probably don't want to get in their cars to go from one show to another, and yep. they're planning on seeing multiple shows, so my question is trams. Well, you know, that's a good question. It's something we floated around for a while. With everything else we try to do, Fringe-run trams have been cost prohibitive. When you think about everything that goes into it, the rental of the thing, the gas, and the insurance, the liability that goes into that, we haven't had trams yet. One day we might have a Kickstarter to actually get us trams, which would be fantastic. My baby's just crying, crying away. Um, um, what we do have is dash buses. Um, so something to look at is, is, is the route of metro dash buses. You got anything to add there, Con? Um, um, uh, bicycles, um, parking can be a problem on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Otherwise, parking is not that much of an issue if you want to, unfortunately, drive around. Um, so right now, there are no official Hollywood Fringe Festival trams yet, although it's definitely been on a wish list for a long time. But check out Dash, because that basically goes around the Fringe circuit, and it's very, very inexpensive. And Metro.net. And Metro.net is the place to go. It's a sponsor. Yes. Welcome. Um, I just have a question. Is, is there a preference in terms of crowdfunding stuff? Like Indiegogo versus Kickstarter, is there like a history of people having more success than one or the other? They're different beasts in how they handle, handle success and how they handle fees. Um, unless things have changed violently with Kickstarter that I didn't hear about, Kickstarter, you need to hit your number or you lose it all. Um, and they take a set amount of fees, which is still too much, I think. But they take a set amount of fees. With Indiegogo, you can fail, and you still get some of that, that, that money, but your fees are going to be higher. So it's really a strategic question from your perspective between those two services. Um, do I think, what are the chances I'm going to make this? And if I don't, do I have the personal funds to put myself over the top? Of course, no one ever does that. Do I have the personal <laughs> funds to put myself over the top? Um, if you absolutely don't, it's like my, I'm setting it at $5,000, and I have exactly $0. My parents won't lend me money to put myself, even for a couple of weeks, to put myself over the top. Maybe Indigo goes your thing if you're worried about it. But know that if you don't make it, then, uh, then you, your fees will be higher. So it's really about your personal comfort with the level of risk with running the campaign. 
Um, and there are other independent ones out there. There's only, only two in the world. They just happen to be the two biggest. Do you have another one? Yeah, uh, Deposited Gifts. There we go. Um, is a really great uh, online uh, thing to, to send to people, you know, if they want to deposit a gift towards your show and stuff. And, they, and I think there, it's like a very minimal, like, dollar fee or, yeah. So it's not like a contest like Kickstarter. Literally, it's like, here's a way to give us money. It literally is. You put your show in, you put your thing in, and you send it on your email list. Show that's great. Whatever amount they want to do. And that's definitely another another way to go. Like last year, we explored Cosvox. Is it still called Cosvox? Cosvox, which is a similar thing. Here's what I'll say about that um, in our experience. Um, it depends on what you're going for. Uh, something about the urgency of Kickstarter tends to get more people engaged in the last part of your campaign, as opposed to saying, here's a link you can give anytime. If you say, we absolutely must, people have gotten a little cynical to this, but uh, we absolutely must raise $5,000 by June 1st, or we will be screwed, um, then perhaps Kickstarter or Indiegogo is a better way to go for you, because the stakes are higher, and you could project those stakes. People will start to understand this as well. I will say, be aware that there was an apex in the social history, as will be written in the, in the history books, of crowd-funded projects. Um, now, we're more like here. <laughs> yeah. Right. There was a, people have gotten a little sick of seeing, give money to my Kickstarter in their Facebook feed at this point. Um, so you need to differentiate yourself. It's work. It is not, I'm going to put my show up on Kickstarter and just expect the monies to come rolling in. It doesn't work like that. It's a pain in the butt, necessary pain in the butt, but it is not simple. It's something, be aware that you will be throwing resources, time resources at for a successful one. There's an extraordinary amount of literature out there on running a successful uh, Kickstarter or Indiegogo or crowdfunding campaign. Read up on it. And there are people, I know a friend who works at Turnstile News will be happy to talk to you about that. Check out Turnstile News, actually, they got lots of information on running a good Kickstarter. Um, yes? Uh, Nellie Bly, uh, The Wild World Show. Um, uh, I had questions to do with solo shows. Yes. Um, one being uh, my pretty best size as yep. a venue, another being Right. You're going to take it around. You're not trying to sell it to Sandler Prime Financial. You're not right. thinking of other ways you're going to make money off of it. Yep. So the whole fundraising thing, not unless, the, except, not necessarily, you know, there might be other, you're trying to make money off of it. Right, right. But this is your own individual person. So how does that factor into what you're going to do? Well, I'll try to answer some of your questions like around in a bit. First of all, uh, Hollywood, for instance, a lot of solo shows. Um, don't think, I would, just, I, would, I, would, I would beg you to rethink one of the ways you're thinking about your solo show, is that don't think you can't eventually sell it to Samuel French. Don't think that. A lot of solo one-person shows have gone on to be very, John Luguziamo's yeah. uh, show, for example, huge. I'm pretty sure that's Samuel French available, like, do you know? I uh, probably, you could probably do his shows, for example. I mean, he tours with it? Or he does. I very well might have sold to other people. All I know is that there, there are one-person shows that you can get through Samuel French and Dramatist Guild and all this. So think of, it, think of it as something that can be part of a larger thing. Um, as far as fundraising, um, well, as far as venue size, you asked a question about venue size. Um, again, if you are Hugh Jackman and you have a solo show, like you're probably thinking about something a little larger. If you don't have, so it totally depends on who you are and your following. <laughs> okay, right. If you, if you are not Hugh Jackman, um, uh, if you are a, 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 is this your first time? If you don't have a built-in audience, if your audience is currently fundamentally to start, remember to start, family and friends, community, then think smaller. We have lots of 25 to 30 seat spaces available within the fringe that won't, and you know what? Hell, if you sell all 30 of those, whoa, you're doing really well budgetarily if you've budgeted correctly. And then next year, you can take it on other fringe circuit tours, you can do the whole thing, your show gets better and better and better, suddenly you can start doing 50, 60, 70. We have had 99 seat shows sold out of the Hollywood Fringe that are solo shows. It's absolutely and completely possible. And then as far as fundraising goes, um, 
With a solo show, you have the one thing that you're marketing, and that's fundamentally more than anything else. You're marketing yourself, your life story, what makes your solo show different than everyone else. Um, think about interesting ways to let that out, like interesting ways to get people engaged in that. Do I want to, well, maybe a, a blog in your case is very interesting. You can release new articles in the blog about parts of my life and what I talk about and how it's different, how you might want to see it. How it makes my solo shows different than everyone else's solo shows. We love solo shows, absolutely. Part of our bread and butter, a lot of people do bring solo shows to the fringe. I talked about hooky shows. I just made it up. Hooky shows. The idea with hooky shows is ideally give your show a little bit of a hook. Um, something that differentiates yourself from all the other solo shows. I'll leave it to you guys to figure out what that hook might be. But in your marketing and even in the creation of the show, what makes your personal experience that you're going to be sharing with this audience in a story form, whatever you do it, how is that different than the, than the solo show that just finished 15 minutes earlier? And how to bring people in and think about that. And if you can think about that, if the musical, that's it. Exactly. If you have a solo show that's a musical, that's unique. And, and, and put it like that. And I would put musical in the title of the show so people know that it's a solo show and it's a musical. An idea. Then, yes? Uh, Brent on four three plays. Uh, quick question. Uh, is a pay what you can show a free show or a pay, pay show? show? Yep. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's a common question. Thank you for asking it. A pay what you can show is a pay show. Um, so yes, that is, that is the answer to the question. Um, uh, uh, yeah, for, for other reasons, because you, you could be collecting money on that show. I um, mean, you usually do and you want to. Yes, uh, let's go. Hi, <laughs> I'm with um, uh, Orchid Brownie Musical. Um, Yes. No. Okay. We will have a we will have one soon. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, question. Yep. We are considering um, last year Saturday parking was sometimes very bad because of the cemetery screening yes. situation. We are considering ballet. Has that been attempted before? Oh or? wow, you are personally considering ballet. No, that'll be a first. <laughs> you know. Um, Note, I just read an article saying that in Los Angeles you need to be licensed to do valet parking. Look that up. I saw the title of the... Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. So there's, there's ways. It's just like with alcohol and catering. You don't need an ABC license. You have a catering organization that has one. In the same way, uh, so, so yes, uh, just, just be aware that there is regulation around valet. And there's a couple of things we're trying um, with cheaper parking. It, and the good news with parking, too, is that uh, there is a whole new parking structure in Hollywood right now um, that wasn't there before, multi-level parking structure in Hollywood now that wasn't there last year. Um, so there will be hopefully more parking. Hopefully in our uh, materials we'll be able to direct patrons and whatnot to more parking. But we will not personally be running a parking lot because that didn't end well for us. Uh, <laughs> you think you're no brainer, right? You think run a parking lot in LA and make millions of dollars. <laughs> The people you put park right in front of our parking lot at the meter or the open space and they look at us and laugh. <laughs> My heart's full of hate. Uh, yes, you had a question. Hi, I'm Alex. <laughs> Yes. Once registration is closed, we'll let you know all about Cabaret. Cabaret um, is your opportunity in the fringe central space. Don't ask where it is. Um, is uh, wherever that will be. Um, there will be a, uh, a spot you, that, that will give 15 uh, to 20 minute spots for uh, uh, fringe acts to come in and do a part of their show for an hour or two um, on certain nights during the fringe. Um, when, when sign-up's ready, you will know. We'll, we'll absolutely let you know. Somebody to consider for Fringe Cabaret. Um, dance show, good. Comedy show, good. Um, like, like interesting, like vaudeville show, great. Uh, one person show about my father beating me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that that doesn't make a great one person show. I'm just saying is when people are drinking and they just saw like a mechanical calf dancing around with a clown riding on top of it, and then a woman comes on stage and talks about being beaten by people will be like, <laughs> So to keep in mind, uh, for those that want to do cabaret, that there, it is a venue, it has a certain aesthetic, and, and to keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. Yes. 
Hi, my name is Spiro, I'm Michael Ford. I'm currently my solo show at Weekly One for Internet. And uh, I just had a question about the website ticket sales. Yes. Are we able to offer discount codes yes. and special prices? Excellent question. Yes. Um, well, we'll talk much more about uh, the website itself at the third town hall and how it works and how to sell tickets and all that jazz. But anything you are used to doing right now on any of the existing big theater ticket selling, ticket selling systems you can do, including discount codes. Um, note you can't do two for ones and stuff like that, but you can actually do like if you put in Villanova in the, in, the, in the code, then all you Villanova alums from Connecticut can get, um, can get, can, can get a benefit price, a, a pay what you can price, or a discounted price, or a free price, or in Villanova's case, you pay more. So yeah, it's up there. <laughs> I guess. Uh, Over here. Yes. Just a quick question. Are you allowing shows on closing night? Um, yes, we are. Oh, okay. Be aware. <laughs> I look at Matt Quinn, who asks me this question every year. Be aware that that is the night where the awards are, and the awards usually start around 7. Now, so have, by all means, we let you book during that time. But let's say you have a marvelous show, which I'm sure you do, um, and let's say that you want to win an award, and you are actually on stage during that time. It's something to think about. Um, you might not be able to actually collect the award. But for a lot of people, I mean, and, and then most of the fringe, built-in community will be at the award ceremony. Um, we've had the prospective award host accidentally schedule a show with a venue. Uh, and he could not actually host the awards before. So, so be aware, uh, we might play around with the times, but generally that evening is the award ceremony. But you can absolutely, the only day between um, June 5th and June 29th that you absolutely may not schedule is June Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Loves. <laughs> um, uh, is June 11th, because that is the day of the opening night party. So, yes. Uh, yes, Greg Krabs. Uh, Hi, Gregory Krabs from Theater Unleashed, <laughs> producing uh, Bringing Back from the First French Festival, Friends Like These, the anatomy of the school shooting. And uh, my question for you, Ben, uh, is when is the French participant packet going to be updated on the website? Oh, oh is it not? Uh, I'll, I'll like to see 2013. You couldn't ask me while we were playing D&D &D the other day. You had to ask me in front of all these people. <laughs> Nerds! <laughs> uh, uh, April uh, da, 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 first. Uh, when, when, when we close registration, we should remove that for the time being. But thank you for letting us know. Um, because that is for last year. The participant packet is what you will get, which will detail all of your various marketing opportunities and some tips on how to run a successful French show, which is a PDF. Um, will be available uh, very, very, very shortly after registration is closed. Um, in the meantime, we'll be releasing via social outlets deals as they come up. So yes, thank you. Yes. Depends on the music. If you're going to write your own music, then you, yourself, you need to give yourself permission. Um, it, 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 if it's popular music, I mean, let me put it this way. It's been done. People haven't. <laughs> People have played music without getting permission. Um, I am not the guy to ask when it comes to like musicians' unions and, and what they do. From what I understand, though, if you want to do it above board, you should get permission. Um, but look into, the, look into the legal aspects of that. There, it's, it's available. It's well documented on Google and whatnot. Um, but I, I, I believe, Dave? What Ben means to say is that he is not a lawyer. But I am not a lawyer. <laughs> um, Speaking of rights, you also should have the, if you're doing a performance of another person's piece, you need to have the rights mm. and permission to do that before yes. you register. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yes, if you were doing well, someone else's but, work. But to be clear, we're not auditing that. <laughs> but you will get shut down. Right. You may get shut down. Um, so I, I, I'm an above board sort of guy. I, 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 if, if, uh, if it's something that, that, that I need to do, I, I do it. Because the last thing you want is for you know, J-Lo to burst into your, your audience <laughs> and, and say like, no, 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 no for you. And then and, 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 and it ends your, and it's, that's, that's how J-Lo yeah. talks. Spend <laughs> <laughs> money to get your show up and running and then get that cease and desist letter uh, right. after you've had one performance. 
Some people in this room know all about cease and desist letters, so like, be very, very aware. <laughs> be very aware that that can happen. No, too, and I'll say this about that. If you are, sat I'm, I'm not a lawyer. If you are satirizing, if you are satirizing a show, technically uh, something in life, technically you do not need permission. Although I am not a lawyer, uh, but that is what I have heard. Um, satires are okay. Yes. He is not a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the whole country? Could you go over insurance and what you may not be audited that? Absolutely. We do not audit your insurance. We do audit venue insurance. If you want to be a venue, you do need insurance. Um, uh, because, you know, we need insurance of what, a couple million dollars, I think, of liability insurance. Um, if you are a project, let's look at it this way. We are extremely well covered on the fringe end. Um, if someone slips and falls coming into your show and they are litigious, there are three parties that they might sue. Point out again, I'm not a lawyer. Um, there are three parties that they might sue. You, um, as your organization, or you personally, if you're the producer, um, the venue in which they slipped, and the Hollywood Fringe Festival. Um, the Hollywood Fringe Festival is covered against that sort of thing. The venue is covered against that sort of thing. We suggest that you reach out and find some insurance options that might cover you as well. Um, we used to have a list of potential insurance people. Maybe it's something. What do we do? Yeah, email support. Email support, and we can give you um, some of the potential insurance uh, people that we've worked with in the past. It's suggested. Let me put it that way. We don't force you to get insurance, but it is suggested. Um, great. Any other questions? And yes. They should check with the venue because some venues offer insurance as part exactly. of Exactly. And some venues offer insurance as well as a part of it. You, the new. Uh, hi, I'm Melissa Firma, the amazing Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I am with Blackbird Dance Company and we're bringing Chicago Shadow Play to the um, I was just wondering about two things live music. Um, we have like a full band. Mm -hmm. So is that like they have like horn sessions Four words for you. Check with your venue. Okay. And then the <laughs> second is, can you describe to me what a typical Fergie show is? Because I don't know what that is. Ah, use that word. You did do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, okay, so a, a fringy show is a bunch of clowns spitting water at each other while, no. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a fringy show. Like, if you look up fringy in the dictionary, that's what you're going to see. Now, a fringe show, which I think is the question you were asking. Probably. Right. Um, a fringe show can be anything. Um, I'll give you what it is traditionally. Um, a fringe show is traditionally, if you go to fringe festivals around the world, a new work or an adapted existing work. It is shorter rather than longer. It is cheaper rather than more expensive, uh, ticket price wise. It has lower production values versus flying swimming pools. Um, and um, it, it uh, yeah, that's pretty much what a fringe show would be like were you to go to a fringe show in anywhere around the world. It would have those qualities. That being said, um, Ricky Gervais does fringe shows. Jean Garofalo does fringe shows. Um, like, like huge theater companies do fringe shows that cost millions of dollars. Not here. Uh, uh, but in Scotland, in Adelaide, in some parts of Canada, they're very, very, very expensive, very long. You know, all those things I just said, they just bust the rules. Um, so, gen but generally, when you, when you talk about a fringe show and what people are used to, that's what, that's what they're used to. Um, so, someone over here? Yes. Um, oh, good question. Good question. Um, it must have dawned on me that Sicily isn't a country, is it? It's like an area. Anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> I have to correct my, my mistake. Um, uh, it's up to you. Fundamentally, like, uh, here's a situation wherein you might want to do multiple venues. If it's a little later in the process and you want only primetime shows, um, and a lot of venues will say, you say, I want all my shows Friday and Saturday at 8 p.m. And they'll say, ha. Uh, <laughs> of course you do. Um, um, those are obviously the slots that go first. And a lot of venues will say, we'll give you one or two of those slots. But the rest, we're trying to spread the love around uh, other than. But if you were to approach multiple venues, you might be able to score more primetime shows. Um, if you're looking to save money 
and only do off slot shows. You might do off slot shows and multiple venues, off primetime shows and multiple venues. There's nothing at all keeping you from doing that. Um, the vast majority of shows are all done in a single venue. But that doesn't mean you can't. And there's, there's plenty of precedent for people who have. The first year, um, we had a really amazing show. It was about the life of, of, of Burton, Richard Burton. And he did it at five venues. Um, Greta is quite something, um, but uh, it has been done before. So, yeah, it's up so, to you. Um, yes? Yeah, David Wheatley with Gallery the Musical. We're, um, we produce our musicals, not this one, but in other places, so we know the numbers there. But do you have any numbers or anyone else does on what they look like for a fringe version? And also, if you bring in equity actors, do you have to sign them up? Okay, uh, the first question was uh, uh, like financial numbers? Yeah. Like how much does it cost in total to do a friend show? Yeah, what the revenues were for different kinds of Oh gosh. I mean, it is so across the board. I, I mean, I've written $8,000 checks in the past. Um, absolutely. If you have a big smash and you have a big theater and you're doing a lot of performances, yeah, I've written $7,000, $7, $8,000 checks um, just recently. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa big check. Um, uh, but then, you know, some people obviously don't make seven to eight thousand dollars. It depends entirely on you, and it's it's so vast. It's such a vast like collection. As far as how many peop much people pay, the um, the minimum is one hundred seventy five dollars. Is you get your venue for free. If you can work some sort of deal with your venue, get your venue with free. Good luck with that. But if you can get your venue with free for uh, and you have and you don't charge at the door. $175 is the absolute bare minimum price to do a friend show. What's the maximum price to do a friend show? Sure. However much, there's a maximum. However much you want to spend. Um, uh, how much, like, like we have no way of gauging how many shows break even, how many shows make money, because we don't have visibility into a lot of their expenses. So all we see is how much they sell through the fringe, not at the box office, just how much they sell through the fringe, and how much, and, and then their, how much they spend on fringe ads and registration. Um, but as I said, some shows do very, very, very well. Some of the shows are in this room, people who produce those shows are in this room right now that you could talk to. And I'd suggest that come to the workshop and they can give you hard numbers on their experience. Um, so come to the workshop that's, that's coming up. Um, ask them, could you, would you please perhaps give us some direct numbers on your show? And I'm sure they'll share it with you. Well, I'm not sure, but they might. <laughs> yes. Oh, what? Yeah, what was the other question? Oh, equity actors. Right. Okay. I am not a lawyer, nor do I represent the Actors Equity Association. So I would say any questions regarding the Actors Union should be directed towards our friends at the Actors Equity Situation Association. If you don't know those contacts, then, then we can help you with that. But um, uh, learn, no, breathe the 99-seat contract as it stands right now, because that's going to guide you a lot when dealing um, with, with equity. Equity does know about us. We've had meetings with the LA Group and Equity. Do you have something to add? What's that? Do you have something to add about equity? Yeah. Um, I'm, hi, Greg, again. Uh, I also am on the leadership council for the uh, Producers League of Los Angeles, the Actual Producers League of Los Angeles, and uh, if anybody's got equity questions, um, I can, I'll, I'll be happy to field them after this out in the front um, because I, I, know the, I know the agreement pretty well and I can, if I don't have the answers, I can refer you to who does. And the, the Producers League is something, something new this year too. So like leveraging the Producers League as part of their goal is to work with Actors' Equity uh, from a producer's perspective. So they are a resource that you can use. So talk to Greg after this. Yes? Uh, Chad Kubihiko, We Make Movies, WM Fest. Uh, one thing that this is, well, this is my third uh, fringe, and one thing that as he was talking just reminded me that of my first, one thing that really helped me was somebody mentioned sort of a, uh, a per show average back then. I don't want to say it because I'm not a venue, but I mean, is that? Is per show that average for, for venue prices? For, yeah, because I, at the time I had, I had asked one of the venues and they gave me this thing that was super high. I thought that was the average. And then when somebody mentioned what the average was, I was like, oh, that's much more powerful. I don't even, <laughs> uh, I don't want to, okay, part, part of what it, I can't say per se, because we're an open economy and for me to say something like that would, would, would be set expectations. $400. Dollars. Right. <laughs> would, 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 sort, would sort of skew it. I can say historically, yeah. In the past, it ranges wildly. 
And I'd say, yeah, and I can't really say exactly what it is, because who knows, <laughs> who knows what it is this year. Right. I would say talk to the venues. The thing is, that the, 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 the nice thing about this, because we have so many venues, is that there is an economy. There is this as aspect of supply and demand. Like, venues are keenly aware of how much people will pay. Uh, and, and that's how they book it. And, uh, and so, yes, that's dangerous ground. <laughs> but talk, talk to the venues. Uh, my, my experience, let me put it this way. Um, if you were to go to a venue uh, today and say, I'm trying to book an eight week run uh, for my show for exclusive access to the venue, um, it would be a, a fair amount of money. The nice thing from a venue perspective and a participant perspective about the fringe is that they aren't talking about one show in their venue for eight weeks. They're talking about up to 50 shows in their venue multiple times a night during slots. So generally, the venues have more leeway to give you a much smaller rent. They can still, they're, they're businesses too, and they can still make their money. And it benefits the participants because they don't have to pay as much to get seen. Um, which leads to one of the cornerstones of the fringe that I talk about to participants and not the press, which is a thing called freedom to fail, which is one of the nice things about fringe. I don't, I learned my lesson, I don't say these things to the LA Times, because then they say, oh, there are failures then? Okay, here's the thing. Um, when you're doing a, uh, like to produce a musical in uh, LA, on average, the last time I checked, it costs between $800,000 and a million dollars. <laughs> to produce a brand new musical on a, uh, on a, on a multiple, thing. You know, people have done it for less, people have done it for more, the whole thing. Um, uh, at Fringe, as I said, you can do it for $250. If you play your card, $175, if you play your cards right. You can do it for $1,000, you can do it for a couple thousand dollars. Significantly, significantly cheaper because of the nature of the festival. And what's nice, if you fail, you know, good for you for trying, first of all. It's a part of what makes art great, is, is, is people risking to fail. You know that poem about like, like a high wire artist and comparing that to, right, okay, that one. Uh, <laughs> not quoting, quoting poetry. But that's one of the nice things about this, is that if you fail, okay, no big deal. You're not gonna be lining up for bread lines. Uh, if, you, if you fail on the larger scale, you're trying to do an eight week run, you might have some issues rolling around. And what's nice about it is you can try it at the fringe. And it works really great, then you could try extending, you could try doing the full thing. You could try the, you know, the New York run and stuff like that in the future. Um, but yeah, something to consider is we try to keep costs as low as possible um, so you guys can participate and so you have room to fill. And talk to, talk to the individual venues, you'll rapidly get an idea of how much things cost. Five minutes. So over here. Oh, wow. Hey, I'm Richard Tanner. Um, I'm wondering if that was failure. Yay. Hey. Well, small parts. Um, <laughs> 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 Yep. Um, in, in the sense that I help me, the art of the you know, has a sort of a share, exchange, because as it says now, I'm correct me if I'm wrong, every time you get a lot of print press, you're starting to scratch. You are. Um, okay, so there's a couple, um, I mean, you're right. Um, there, there, there's, a, there's a couple of uh, uh, alliances out there that we're a part of. We talk quite a lot. Um, that we've called it the SoCal circuit, sort of in our head, although it's nothing specific, um, between San Diego and Fresno and San Francisco, it's not SoCal, Santa Cruz, um, and th those festivals. And they were a part of a, a, a large organization called the USAFF, the United States Association of Fringe Festivals, which I think is like fringefestival.org, is it? USAFF. And they were a part of the World Festival Alliance, which includes us in New York, Adelaide, Edinburgh, Amsterdam, Prague, South Africa, and a few others as well. And they all have really go places and you know, we drink beer in exotic locations, which is nice. Um, but one thing that we can't do, unfortunately, and I, I, I mentioned this earlier, is that the nature, the financial model, how they're generally set up between fringe festivals can be vastly different, night and day. Um, you'll have some fringe festivals where you pay one price and that's all you pay. Um, they set the ticket price for you. They tell you where you're going to go. Um, and they tell you how many performances you have. Everyone has five. All the ticket prices are ten. Stuff like that. And you don't have, you don't have the leverage to book your own venue. You get assigned a venue. Great, great, great festivals. It's just different from us. And um, so there's really no way 
to like create one sort of deal across them. That's the issue. Yep. Well, I was just going to say that we do have different directors from other fringe festivals hello, um, come to Hollywood Fringe every year. Um, we're not sure who will come every year, but every year there are different ones who come. So San Diego does come to this fringe. Um, there has been talk of Amsterdam coming to this fringe. And so wh while we are trying to make that happen, do know that they have an eye on our festival all the time. And if you are interested in connecting with the directors of some of those festivals, yep. do email support and we can do that. Absolutely. 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 Yeah, yeah. We, we know everybody because we all talk and we're all just a little bit, you know, competitive with one another. Uh, but, uh, but, but, but we're all, we're all friends. We all have good relationships. So if you, if you do, if you do, I'm going to go five over unless anyone cares because I'm going to do my last lightning round. Um, it, it, leave if you need to leave. It's fine. Football. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we, 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 we can't hook you up with other people and give you an idea of what other French investors are like and what their models conceivably are. Okay, we have reached the lightning, the lightning uh, form. Uh, yes, Matt? Oh, just a quick thing since it is wrapping up. Speaking on behalf of the complex and the asylum open space, on uh, any other venue that's here that can participate, we're going to be around a little bit afterwards if you want our cards and quick question. And then also both uh, the complex and the asylum elephant will be open till about two, uh, 2.45. If on the way to three of clubs you want to stop by and take a quick peek, it's a good time to come in now. But we'll be well, both all hopefully be going afterwards to three of clubs. Well. So that's great. So you saw one venue. Here we are. And now you can see complex and asylum as well on the walk back. And I'm sure talk to any of the other venues that are here as well. And they'll be able to set you up walkthroughs as well. Um, OK. As I said, lightning round. Here's how it works. Everyone raises their hand who still has a question. Who we've got? Who we've got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. OK, OK. It's a little more than normal. Uh, we're going to go from this end to this end. Try to make a question as brief as possible. I will make my answer as brief as possible. Who is number one? Number one, over here. Wow, I mean, it shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here they are. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, right. Big cheap HFF fourteen uh, hashtag LA theater hashtag. The fifteen people in this room are about to give you their business card, huh? Directors Lab West. Uh, look at them. Great. Next. That was great. Anybody else want to offer money? Yes. Are there alternative venues, non-traditional venues, like under a bridge or something? Absolutely. Okay. So the the list of venues that you see right there on the website right now are just to start. Um, if you want to do something under a bridge, no, you might need to get city permission to do something like that, or in a park, or in a church, or in a coffee shop, or a laboratory. I did a show in a laboratory. It was the Gas Heart. It was amazing. Um, like uh, 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 you can do it anywhere you want, as long as it's within the, the geographical boundaries. And uh, insurance. And you need to get insurance. And those two things. Like you can do it in a truck if you have insurance. And people have asked before. We said insurance, and we never hear back from them again. Um, but uh, no, you can do whatever you want as long as it's insured. That's the only thing. As long as it's within those, those geographical boundaries. Next, yes. Um, on the last page of the guide, so, so every listing, uh, uh, if it's if the performance is all at one venue, we'll say this performance is at the underground. We'll just say that. If it's performance by per, 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 by performance, very elaborate software code that says <laughs> under each performance where it's going to be. And then there's a grid like H5. And then you could look in the last page where the map is, you can see H5. Then we list every single venue ah, as well. Um, every single venue as well. Uh, I spilled water all over the Lillian once. It wasn't pretty. Uh, that uh, the lists every single venue as well as where they're located on the map. Hope that answers your question. Great. Yes. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Just know they won't magically appear in the printed guide. But you can absolutely, you can absolutely put it on the, the website. Not all. OK. Well, we'll get into talking about extensions a little later. In the meantime, if you want to talk about extensions, um, there's, there's, there's a program that we're calling the Encores. 
Um, talk to these people right here. They'll be able to answer some questions about the extension program that the, the, the people who work with the French put together. Um, so yes, uh, yes. Yeah, uh, my uh, show is Cracker Jack. Um, quick question on the registration to finish it. Do you have to have the dates locked down before you can you need to have a, uh, an arrangement with your venue. You need to have at least one performance booked. Um, now, also keep in mind, you do not need every performance locked down. They don't even need to be correct to pay your registration fee. You just need to deal with the venue such that the venue feels comfortable adding you to their website. Um, that being said, most venues will want to schedule your performance immediately upon booking because they have to book around everyone else. So I would say, as I say to everyone, book your venue as soon as you possibly can to lock in the best dates and times and just get that out of the way. Um, but nothing from a print perspective is written in stone until April 1st. Good. Uh, but did that, so everyone here, I've answered all these questions. Yeah. And we're over here. Are you allowed to sell things like CDs of original music from the show at the show? Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, as long as you, you know, I'm not a lawyer, own the rights uh, to them. Question? Yeah. Uh, can you sell merchandise at the show? And um, I also bring up uh, the thing I said, the first four words, check with your venue. Yeah. It's, it's beyond our world. Uh, it's the venue's world. Um, so check with your venue to make sure it's cool. Um, yes? Could we all have your cell phone number if we promise not to tell you? <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> it's 867-5309. <laughs> Um, uh, Jenny will answer and will say hello. Um, uh, quick tip, if you're in a Vons or anywhere that requires you to enter an actual like card number, like for your rewards card, enter 867-5309. It works everywhere. Okay. Uh, <laughs> was there one more question? Yeah. Um, my friend and I have two half-hour solo shows that we're producing together. And I emailed support and they said we needed to register separately. But from here on out, we want them to be linked in terms of promotion and all of that. Is there something we can do. Right, okay, so basically you have two shows that you want to sort of run as a rep type of situation. Um, yeah. Know this, okay, uh, and people have done this before, but know this, you only get one guide listing. So one guide listing per registration. So, so it would be um, like my show about dogs slash my show about cats. And also know that you only have so many letters to use in your title. 300, uh, 300 letters. To, Oh, there's 300 in your description and so much in your title. So you can piggyback. It's not recommended because it's confusing. Because as I said, you only have 300 actual words you can use to just let characters, characters are not words. We're going to talk about this. 300 characters to describe your show. Um, and in that description, you'd somehow need to say Mondays, Wednesdays, this show, Tuesdays, Thursdays, this show. It will confuse people. Well, Yeah, absolutely. All I'm saying is that you would need to, okay, and that takes a little bit of that problem away. But like, it's not recommended, but if you're trying to really, really, if you have a really, really slim budget and that's the way you want to do it, then by all means, just know that one guide listing is what you get. That's, that's, that's the only caveat. So absolutely possible. I think that was it. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>